Look at this map of California's Imperial Valley. You'll see the Salton Sea, the state's largest lake, shrinking fast, exposing toxic lake bed that's turning nearby towns into respiratory health disaster zones. Now zoom down. Thousands of feet underground, superheated geothermal brine is dissolving 18 million metric tons of lithium. That's $540 billion worth, more than enough to power America's entire electric vehicle transition. Same tectonic forces, same basin, one creates poison, one creates treasure. What happens when the place that traps water also traps the metal we need most? To understand what's happening here, you need to understand where here actually is. The Salton Sea sits 236 feet below sea level in one of the strangest geological features in North America. It's called a pull-apart basin, a massive depression created where the San Andreas Fault meets an active spreading center. Tectonic plates are literally tearing the ground apart here. This basin is what geologists call endorheic. That's a fancy word meaning it has no outlet. Water flows in, but it can't flow out. The only escape is evaporation. And deep beneath the surface, superheated geothermal brine, cooked by the same tectonic forces that created the basin. Now, here's the crazy part. This lake shouldn't even exist. In 1905, engineers were building irrigation canals from the Colorado River. They lost control. For 18 months, the entire Colorado River poured into this basin. By the time they stopped it, they'd accidentally created a 350 square mile lake in the middle of the desert. An engineering disaster that would take a century to reveal its hidden value. But why is there lithium here at all? The same tectonic forces that tore this basin open also bring something else to the surface. As the Earth's crust spreads apart, magma rises from deep underground. That magma heats groundwater, creating the geothermal reservoirs but it also leaches lithium from ancient volcanic rocks buried miles beneath the surface. For millions of years, this superheated brine has been dissolving lithium from surrounding rock formations and concentrating it in underground reservoirs. The temperatures down there reach over 350 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to keep lithium in solution, deep enough that no one knew it was there until geothermal companies started drilling in the 1980s. For a brief moment in history, this accident looked like a miracle. In the 1950s and 60s, the Salton Sea became California's unlikely Riviera. Resort towns sprouted along the shores, yacht clubs opened, speedboat races drew crowds. This was the place to be. But remember, this basin has no outlet. Every year, agricultural runoff poured in, loaded with salt, fertilizer, and pesticides. Every year, water evaporated. Every year, the remaining water got more concentrated, more toxic. The numbers are staggering. The lake has lost one-third of its volume in just 25 years. It's now twice as salty as the Pacific Ocean. Over 35,000 acres of toxic lake bed have been exposed to the wind, and it's shrinking by another 2,400 acres every single year. When that exposed lake bed dries, the wind picks it up and carries it onto nearby communities, predominantly Latino farm worker towns. Asthma rates here are three times the California average. Air quality violations are constant. The Riviera became a death trap. Towns like Bombay Beach turned into ghost towns, slowly being reclaimed by toxic dust. But beneath that dust, something valuable was brewing. That superheated geothermal brine I mentioned? Turns out it's not just hot water, it's a lithium gold mine. 18 million metric tons of lithium dissolved in the brine thousands of feet underground. At current prices, that's worth $540 billion. To put that in perspective, this single deposit contains enough lithium to build 375 million electric vehicle batteries. That's enough to power the entire American transition to electric vehicles, and then some. Now, here's where the geology gets beautiful. There are already 11 geothermal power plants operating around the Salton Sea, generating 400 megawatts of electricity. The potential? 2,950 megawatts. But the genius part is this. Lithium extraction doesn't work instead of geothermal power. It works through it. Here's how it works. Geothermal plants already pump superheated brine up from 8,000 feet underground to generate electricity. 
That part's been happening for decades. The new technology is called Direct Lithium Extraction, or DLE. Before the brine gets re-injected back underground, it passes through a chemical process that selectively captures lithium ions while leaving everything else in the water. Think of it like a molecular filter. The brine keeps circulating, the lithium gets extracted, and the whole system becomes more profitable. This is fundamentally different from lithium mining in places like Nevada. There, you're digging up rock, crushing it, and using massive amounts of fresh water to process it. Here, you're borrowing brine that's already being used for power generation. No new water consumption, no open pit mines, one resource, two revenue streams. Geothermal companies are estimating $7 to $18 billion in annual revenue from lithium alone on top of the power generation. Now, it's not quite free money. Adding lithium extraction reduces power plant efficiency by about 5 to 8 percent. You're adding equipment, complexity, and processing time. But the lithium revenue more than makes up for the lost electricity production. The math works. The technology works. Three major companies have already jumped in. Controlled Thermal Resources, Berkshire Hathaway Energy, and Energy Source Minerals. They're calling it Lithium Valley. The vision? Meet 100% of U.S. lithium demand by 2030. Break China's stranglehold on lithium processing. They currently control 70% of global capacity. Turn America's most toxic lake into its most valuable mineral resource. There's one problem, though. To extract lithium at scale, these plants need to pump billions of gallons of geothermal brine through their systems every year. And in California, water isn't yours just because it's underground, even if it's 8,000 feet down, even if it's 350 degrees and full of dissolved minerals. Someone has to own the rights to it. And that's where this whole thing gets complicated. As of 2025, three major projects are stuck in regulatory quicksand. Berkshire Hathaway Energy suspended three geothermal plants in January 2025. Projects that were shovel-ready, fully funded, and designed to produce both lithium and power. The reason? They couldn't get transmission line permits approved fast enough. The power grid can't handle the capacity these plants would generate. Upgrading it requires navigating a Byzantine maze of utility politics and infrastructure funding. On top of that, every project needs approval from at least four different agencies. Each one operates on its own timeline. Each one can stop a project dead. Then there are the water rights battles. Now, geothermal brine isn't legally the same as fresh water in California. It's too hot, too salty, too mineralized to be considered usable water. But here's the legal gray area. When you pump brine to the surface, extract lithium, and re-inject it, does that count as appropriating water under California Water Code Section 1201? The companies say no. They're just borrowing it temporarily and putting it back. Environmental groups and some water agencies say yes. Any extraction of underground fluid is a diversion that requires water rights permits. The paradox is stunning. The lake is dying faster than the government can approve the permits to extract value from it. Meanwhile, on the policy side, there is movement, just not on lithium. The state has committed $250 million to an artificial wetland project. It's essentially a giant dust control system. It won't stop the lake from shrinking, it won't unlock the lithium, it's a band-aid on a hemorrhage. So here's where we are. America is sitting on $540 billion in domestic lithium reserves while remaining dependent on Chinese imports. The geopolitical stakes couldn't be clearer, the economic opportunity couldn't be bigger, and yet nothing is moving. So where does this go? There are really three paths from here. Path A is status quo. The lake keeps shrinking. By 2030, over 100,000 acres of toxic lake bed will be exposed. The $540 billion stays in the ground. The health crisis in surrounding communities gets worse. China maintains its dominance over global lithium supply chains. America keeps importing what it's literally sitting on top of. Plan B is Lithium Valley's success. Political pressure finally breaks through. Permits get fast-tracked by 2026 or 2027. By 2030, the region is generating $7 to $18 billion per year in lithium revenue. The U.S. achieves lithium independence. Imperial County, one of California's poorest regions, gets 10,000 jobs. 
The lake still shrinks, but at least the communities affected see real economic benefits. The environmental disaster becomes an economic transformation. Path C is the window closing. This one's darker. New battery technology emerges that doesn't need lithium, solid state, sodium ion, something else. Or a major earthquake disrupts the infrastructure before it's even built. Or political winds shift and the incentives disappear. The opportunity closes. Forever. The lithium that could have powered American energy independence instead blows away as toxic dust. An engineering mistake in 1905 created a lake. Environmental neglect in the 1990s turned it into a poison. Geological luck in 2025 revealed it was sitting on a treasure the whole time. It's geography's final irony. The same tectonic forces that created the trap also created the treasure. The same basin that concentrates deadly dust also concentrates the metal that could power our future. Now it's a race. Can American politics move faster than evaporation? Can we extract the lithium before the lake becomes nothing but toxic wind? $540 billion, 375 million EV batteries, American lithium independence, all of it sitting under a dying lake in the California desert. The question isn't whether the lithium is there, it's whether we'll dig it up or just watch it blow away. What do you think happens next? Does Lithium Valley break through in the next few years, or does the regulatory maze kill it? Leave a comment below. And if you want more True Geo stories, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.